Hey, it's Vanessa, and welcome back to my channel. I have another what's for dinner for you guys, where I share with you what I feed my blended family of six from Monday to Friday. Today, I have four meals for you. First up is a delicious homemade lasagna. I would up and go. I would up and go. I'd walk. Now let's take a look at what you'll need to make my lasagna. I have roughly two pounds of ground beef to make my sauce. I just use Classico jarred sauce, you guys. It's the sweet basil marinara one big can of the Kirkland tomatoes. To season that, I'm gonna use oregano, onion powder, basil, and garlic powder. I just have regular lasagna noodles. You could use the ready to bake ones. I'm gonna throw some ricotta and some cottage cheese, some restaurant style or lasagna style cottage cheese, and one egg. Of course, I'm gonna throw some Parmesan in there and shred up some mozzarella. Pick you up when you fall. All right, so the first step in making your sauce is just to go ahead and brown up your meat. You could use any type of meat you want. You could use ground pork with this. You could use ground turkey. You could even use sausage, which is often what I'll put in, but I didn't have any. I'm gonna go ahead and season my meat. I'm gonna season it with the oregano, the basil and the onion powder and the garlic powder. And it's however much you think you're gonna want. I really cook by feel and what our family tastes prefer. Turns upside down Questions of how And would you love me now And could you hold me Now this is totally optional. You don't have to make this little filling that I like to put in between my layers. A lot of like really nice lasagnas have this. All I'm doing is adding about half of each container, kind of equal parts cottage cheese to ricotta, a lot of pepper and one egg <laughs> and the shell apparently. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and stir it all together. It just kind of adds an extra depth to your lasagna but is absolutely not necessary because it can start to get a little bit pricey when you start buying all of those extra cheeses. You know I'll be here when you need me to. I went ahead and threw a little bit of the shredded parm in there just because it looked like it needed it. So you won't have to stay. Once the meat is all cooked and relatively broken down, I'm gonna go ahead and add in the can of tomatoes along with the two cans of sauce. Now, I have made homemade sauce in the past, but honestly, like when I go to my mom's, I rely on her homemade spaghetti sauce because it's amazing and I know it will always be delicious. Mine is questionable, so I rely on Classico to help me make a delicious pasta sauce or lasagna sauce. When you fall, you know I'll be here when you need. All right, so now I'm just gonna go ahead and shred up some mozzarella. You could use the bagged, uh, pre-shredded kind if you want. This is just what I've been comfortable using lately. Won't have to stay alone. Now for your noodles, go ahead and lay them out in the pan that you're gonna use and fill it up with really hot tap water and let them sit for about 15 minutes. It comes out perfect every time. All right, once your time has passed, we're gonna go ahead and start assembling the lasagna. Add a little bit of sauce on the bottom of your pan just to prevent your noodles from sticking and go ahead and stack them in there as tightly as you can. For my first layer, I only put three, but you'll see later that I go ahead and kind of break them up to fit into those edges. Go ahead and add a layer of sauce, spoon on your cheese mixture, and then you're gonna go ahead and sprinkle on some mozzarella and some shredded Parmesan and you're gonna repeat. For your final layer, just go ahead and add some sauce and some mozzarella cheese with some Parmesan on the very top. Now if 
you have a mound of cheese like my lasagna here, you're gonna wanna create a bit of a tent out of some aluminum foil so that you can protect it from burning too quickly in the oven, but it won't stick to your aluminum foil. This works about 85% of the time. I did have a little bit of cheese that stuck to the sides, but nothing that I couldn't get off and put right back on the lasagna. This worked pretty well, I have to say. Here she was guys, super thick and super delicious. This is a meal that I like to make. It can get a little bit pricey, but I know that we will eat this for three days. Literally, it is, I don't even know how many days later, there's some in my freezer. It's just amazing. We don't eat massive portions, so this really stretches for us. I love making it. It's better than any restaurant I've ever eaten at. All right, Tuesday we had ham and Swiss sliders, which I had never had before and was super excited to try this. First off, we just have some mini brioche buns. We don't have the Hawaiian style um, sweet rolls here, at least not on the East Coast in Canada. I'm gonna go ahead and use a whole stick of butter. To season, I'm using Dijon and gourmet uh, grainy mustard with Worcestershire sauce, garlic powder, minced onion, Parmesan cheese, poppy and sesame seeds. You guys, you just wait. Obviously, I need some Swiss cheese and some Black Wars ham too. Okay, so all I've done is melted the stick of butter and added a few shakes of Worcestershire sauce. Same goes for the mustards. I'm just kind of adding it as I go. Like I said, I do not have a recipe for this. I think I must have watched a million YouTube videos and looked at a million Pinterest recipes and just kind of combined all of my favorite things. And here you have it, all of Vanessa's favorite things. The next step, which I've heard can be quite challenging, is slicing these rolls in half. Now, I didn't have anyone to guide me, so all I did is go around each edge about a quarter of the way through and then went all the way through and it actually worked really, really well. What I'm gonna do is baste the inside of the rolls with just a tad of this mixture, just so they're not too dry. And then I'm gonna fold up my ham and layer it across. I like to fold it up just to give it a little bit more dimension. Does that make sense? Then I'm gonna layer it with my Swiss cheese and then another layer of ham. At this point, once everything is on there, go ahead and pop your lid on and throw it into a dish. Or for me, I have an aluminum pan that I got at Costco. They're 30 for 6.99, it's an awesome deal. And I brush a little bit of butter on the bottom. Now go ahead and set your sandwiches right in there and then I'm gonna pour that butter mixture right over top and smooth it out a little bit with my silicone um, brush, but not too much because I really want it to have a lot of depth on the top. And then I'm gonna shake a very small amount of the Parmesan cheese right over top before I put them in the oven. Now of course you wanna cover them, otherwise they will burn fairly quickly. But at the end, I did take it off and let them sit there for about another two minutes in the oven uncovered. First off, the smell is phenomenal and just take a look. I will say I probably would have cooked them maybe another five minutes. I did it for 15 minutes at 350, but you can see the cheese didn't really melt very much. So I think I will cook them a little bit longer next time. However, we devoured these. These are some plates I made up for my stepkids with just some delicious pickles, celery and ranch and some raspberries we inhaled this jamie ate them later cold i definitely recommend this this is going to become a summer staple i just know it i would up and go 
All right, for this Wednesday, we had Chinese style beef, which was a HelloFresh inspired meal. Well, not just inspired, I actually followed the recipe to a T. First up, I'm gonna make some rice in my rice cooker. One thing that they did was add some ginger and garlic right to the pan or the pot because they cooked their rice in a pot. I use a rice cooker, guys, you know how I roll. So I just went ahead and did probably about a teaspoon of garlic powder and a teaspoon of ginger into the rice cooker and it really made a difference. This is going to be how I make my rice from now on. Pick you up. And I should say, I always cook my rice a two to one ratio, two cups of water for one cup of rice. When you need me to, you need me to, so you won't have to stand alone. All right, so like I said, this was the HelloFresh meal I had gotten last month, and I had said when I got it, I wanted to recreate it on my own. So I'm showing you guys my overpriced ground beef. I'm sure you're all struggling with this right now. You just need some green beans, some baby bok choy. Are these not the cutest things you've ever seen? Also some sprigs of scallions or green onions, whatever you want to call them. And for your seasonings, guys, it's super simple. Some garlic salt, hoisin sauce, which is like a sweet Asian uh, soy sauce, I guess, a little bit thicker. Also some chili garlic sauce and some sweet chili sauce. It is so easy to make this. Oh, and some ginger. You guys are going to want to make this, I'm telling you. I will say I wish I would have made a little bit more sauce, but it still worked out really, really well. All I'm doing here is chopping the ends off my beans and then slicing them into threes or into bite-sized pieces. So I promise I'll be there for you. I'll pick you up when you fall. Now you'll see when you get bok choy it can be pretty dirty so I went ahead and rinsed it out in my salad spinner here and now I'm just trying to get it dried off before I go ahead and cook with it. This is the OXO salad spinner. I highly recommend it. It's about $39 here in Canada but it's amazing. I use it for washing and rinsing and prepping all my produce. We'll keep our heads to now you can prep your bok choy however you want to eat it. You could leave it whole like this and just kind of make it like a little salad. I like to chop it in half lengthwise and then into bite-sized pieces. And I kind of take the ends, um, like the, the leafy parts off uh, when they're wilted because this one was like that. And so I promise I'll be there for you. I'll pick you up when you fall. Here I'm chopping up the green onions. I chop them all up because I want some just in the fridge for later on in the week. You don't need to cut this many. You probably just need to chop up as many as you want to garnish your dish with because that's primarily what it's used for. It's also used to mix in with the rice when it comes out. So however many green onions you want, that's how many you should chop up. I'm going to go ahead and prep the sauce for the beef. Basically how it breaks down is you have about four parts hoisin sauce to about two parts sweet chili sauce. And then you're only gonna add about one part of the chili garlic sauce. I don't know why I was struggling to spit that out, you guys. That one's a little bit spicy. So again, that's up to you. If you want more spice, definitely add more. I like it more on the sweeter side, so I didn't add too much. Although Jamie said he did get a few bites that had quite a little kick of spice in them. Once you've combined that just go ahead and set it to the side because the next step is to go ahead and saute our green beans and our bok choy all you want to do is on a medium high heat and a little bit of vegetable oil is to toss them around for about two to three minutes once that's done you can go ahead and throw in your bok choy for another two or three minutes and then you're going to set it all to the side on a plate and then you're going to dump in your ground beef
Now the only thing that I season this ground beef with before I add my sauce is a little bit of garlic salt and a little bit of pepper and that's it. All I'm doing here is I have laid it out flat and it's mostly cooked. I just want it to develop a little bit of a crust on the bottom. That's what my hands are telling you right now, if you can tell. So I have this on high heat, just trying to caramelize it a little bit before I add the sauce. This is when you're gonna see, I probably could have used a little bit more sauce, but I think it's because I used more hamburger than they gave me in the HelloFresh kit when I got it. But you know what, your girl can't be perfect. Now my rice is all cooked delicious and a little bit sticky, which is how I like it. I'm gonna add a good handful of the green onions and just fluff it around in the rice. I'm telling you, this is the way to eat rice. Green onions, ginger, and garlic powder. I don't know why I didn't know this before. everything laid out on the counter you know how our family rolls everything is buffet style here just looking at this is making me want to go into my fridge right now and get some leftovers it was so good you guys if you haven't tried hello fresh and you're considering it definitely do so because it inspires you like this and you recreate some amazing dishes All right, here we have easy chicken pot pie. This is a crouton cracker jack recipe, but I am using some refrigerated pie crust because that's what's easiest for me. I have rotisserie chicken that I shred up earlier that I had gotten on my grocery haul, some flour, garlic powder, some ground thyme. I'm gonna use one little packet or pocket of the chicken bouillon seasoning, some ground black pepper, salt. I'm also going to use the seasoning salt from Crouton Cracker Jack's recipe. Go ahead and check his website out. This is where I primarily got the recipe for this delicious uh, chicken pot pie. Also a stick of butter. For vegetables you could put potato. I don't like potato in my pot pie. So I have onion, celery, peas, and carrots. Some chicken broth and a can of evaporated milk because I didn't have milk. In all honesty I think I will probably always use evaporated milk because it's easy to keep in the cupboard and it tasted no different. The first step is to go ahead and chop your chicken into bite-sized pieces and I would say I had about three cups of chicken for this recipe. you as you dry do you know i'm looking and i can't help but smile do you know now i used the tender flake pie crust base it is smaller than a typical pie plate when i would make it myself so i did have quite a bit left over all i did was throw it into a gallon ziploc bag and freeze it so that i could take it out to make another easy chicken pot pie in a couple weeks should i feel like it but if you're using your own crust and a great big pie plate you probably have just enough if not you have a little left for chicken a la king or like jamie he likes to eat it with tea biscuits just with a spoon heated up in the microwave it is amazing it's the seasoning salt I'm telling you this is delicious now all I'm doing here since I'm done rambling is chopping up all of my vegetables very finely and by all of my vegetables I mean my onion and my celery Forever. I watch you as you sleep you don't know I'm looking with you I used a whole onion. He says to use half, but we like the onion in there. I've got one cup of milk and two cups of broth, and all I did was add a package of the OXO seasoning to it, just so that it would heighten the chicken flavor, and I find that makes a big difference. He doesn't call for that either. Like I said, I tweaked it a little bit. All I'm doing here is melting the stick of butter with the onions until they start to become the slightest translucent. I'm talking three or four minutes here, and then you're gonna add your half a cup of flour to build your roux. You really wanna keep stirring this, but you need to cook that flour off for about a good minute before you start adding any of your liquids. At this point, I'm slowly gonna add my chicken stock just to kind of loosen up what's on the bottom and start to incorporate it. I kind of add it in three different increments. Once that's combined and gets a little bit heated, I'm gonna add the milk. It's just a stage or it's a process of stages because you don't wanna overwhelm the flour and end up with like a lumpy gravy. This is probably the best way to do it. And once this comes together, the hard part's done. Forever, I'm loving this moment. Can we stay here forever? 
camera cut out here, but I did add the milk. And at this point, we can go ahead and add some seasonings while we're waiting for it to come to a boil. I'm gonna add one whole teaspoon of that seasoning mix. Don't get tempted to add more, it'll be too salty. About half a teaspoon of the ground thyme. And I'm also gonna add about a quarter teaspoon of pepper and a quarter teaspoon of garlic powder. The one thing I did appreciate about this is I tend to not use measurements and I just kind of go willy nilly with my seasonings. I have found when I stick to this to a T, it is the perfect amount of salt and it's not overwhelming. Forever. As soon as it starts to boil, remove it from the heat and go ahead and add all of your vegetables in your chicken and just stir it together. And then I just set it to the side to let it cool. But you guys, you could eat this with a spoon right now. It is so, so good. So here's the pie tarts I was talking about. You can tell they're a little bit smaller. So from what I'm used to using, usually I would use the Pillsbury and just lay it out in my own a pie plate but I didn't do that so I had a lot of extra it was fine because I'll make another one I have another one of these pie tarts the one thing about them is you're supposed to be able to invert the other one and just set it on top for me personally I liked using the Pillsbury one because it had some overlay and I could create a really good fluted crust around the edge all I'm doing now that I've dumped all of my filling, I don't wanna overflow it, so I'm just taking a fork to push it down and seal in the edges to make sure that there's no air pockets. So here's what I'm talking about. The Pillsbury crust fits perfectly over top and I'm gonna roll it up and then I'm gonna do like a weird little fluting thing. It's nothing fancy, you guys, but it just gives that extra crust because I like having that to kind of dip into my chicken pot pie as I'm eating it. You also want to cut a couple slits into the top to let some air escape, otherwise you will have an explosion in your oven. But I like to do this cute little design, it's kind of a classic star shape from when I was a kid. That's just what I remember apple pies looking like on top. You could brush this with egg wash at this point. I've never felt the necessity to do that. It browned up very nicely and like I said, I just didn't think it was necessary to waste the egg. I've been there a thousand times before all right here it is so so good i'm telling you when i make this my family is happy and look how flaky that was and look how brown it is and i did not need to put an egg wash on it it just wasn't necessary i do let this sit for about 15 minutes before i tried to cut into it but you'll see it's still gonna kind of fall out everywhere but that's all right that's classic home cooking you guys she don't need to be perfect she just need to taste good once you've had to walk to this was the perfect dinner to end the week. It's always delicious. And now I know I have leftovers in the freezer to make another one. You guys, thank you so much for stopping by my channel today. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it gave you some meal inspiration and some dinner ideas for your family throughout the week. And I hope that you come back and you check out the rest of my content and you take a second to subscribe. You guys have an awesome week and I will see you all in my next video. Take care. Before, but the fear.